Smell this. Doesn't it smell like strawberries? Ugh. Then boom, there's a disclaimer. Pause to read, click to skip, and definitely support the sites that are linked below. In every piece of video media, there is always the chance that errors will be made. Ranging from subtle continuity errors to incorrect coloring between shots or even frames, here is every mistake in Bob's Burgers Season 1, Episode 1. Oh my god. No! When Linda mistakenly opens the themed casket of Mr. Caffrey, believing it to be an anniversary surprise from Bob, she realizes after some intrusive investigation that the corpse is hiding no anniversary gift. What she fails to realize, though, is that the right hand right in front of her is in fact a second left hand. Bob and Linda both look the same in this flashback as they do in the present. Even if Linda had given birth to the youngest Belcher in the flashback, meaning this would be the closest time to the present, and thus require only a minimum amount of character aging, it would have been nine years ago when Louise was born, so they should look younger. This issue is fixed in future episode flashbacks. Items appearing out of nowhere is pretty common between shots and scenes. Here we have a distracted Hugo recalling the day that he heard that his once fiancée Linda was actually getting married. You're married to him? Ron is clearly standing behind Hugo with his arms at his side. After a short series of shots covering the 9 is divisible by 3 line from earlier in the episode, How do you remember that? It's 9-3. Nine, 9 is divisible by 3. That doesn't make sense. Ron is holding a large yellow poster that materialized from the ether. <laughs> Speaking of things appearing, or in fact disappearing between shots, Linda's apron is a veritable Houdini. When Linda leaves the restaurant to speak with the protesters, she's seen removing her apron. For the next couple of shots, we can see that Linda is standing on Bob's right-hand side and without her apron on. Then, all of a sudden, Linda teleports to Bob's other side and her apron's on again. Not only that, seconds later, the apron's gone into hiding. Then it's back on again. And finally, it's off one more time. And this is not even the only time Linda performs apron magic. That's not a euphemism. They're really grinding the meat. When Bob forgets that today is in fact his wedding anniversary, Linda is wearing her apron and grinding meat. The next sequence features three flashbacks. During the first flashback, the pocket and pen on her apron disappear. They do return in the next flashback, but this isn't even where the real magic happens. It's made with human remains from the crematorium next door. As the fade between the birth flashback and present day transitions, you can see that the pocket, located on Linda's right side, magically moves to the left hand side of her apron as she walks off camera. From this shot later in the episode, we can see clearly that Linda's character design has the pocket modeled on the right hand side. So any deviation from the pocket being on the right hand side is incorrect. Okay, this is a small one, but Bob and Linda still have their aprons on while riding the Ferris wheel at the end of the episode. I'm pretty sure that the show does become more consistent with them removing the aprons when they're actually away from Bob's Burgers, but I'll have to get back to you on that. Now this is the last of my tiny nitpicks. The presumed employee bathroom denoted by the sign on this door is actually the door leading to the alleyway from the back of the kitchen. Was Bob just going in the alley this whole time? <laughs> All right, now it's time to talk about Louise's little diabolical masterpiece. Oh crap. What I will, for the sake of YouTube, call the Bad Touch Burger. It comes with candy. Get it? Yeah, we're already one episode in, and Louise has hijacked the burger of the day and jeopardized this channel. Here you can see that there is no burger on the grill, on the sandwich bar, or assembled on the kitchen pass. Instantaneously, Louise has the Bad Touch Burger and its signature candy in hand. Next scene, no issue here. But the third scene, the burger and plate have shrunk. The fourth scene has the candy switching sides of the plate. And now it's back. From its first appearance to seven cuts later, we've now earned a second mystery piece of mystery candy. And it's gone. And it stays gone for the next handful of cuts until... Did someone actually order this? Yeah. Who? Him. The entire burger just dematerializes. Since we're on the subject of not actually seeing where things go, let's talk about the completely inconsistent transparency of the shop window of Bob's Burgers itself. Scene for scene, you will notice that the details in the window of the shop and the blue tint to be very inconsistent. Before diving deeply into this, I thought it might have been a technique where the details would vary from almost incomplete line art and very, very blue from far away, and then switch over to a very uh, lightly blue tinted, highly detailed area as the camera got in close. If this technique was employed with consistency, it would actually achieve this effect quite well. You can decide for yourself if the transparency of the window seems to fit the shot or if it's almost by luck. And since we're staring the problem in the face, let's look at a problem with Bob's face, or rather his reflection. While Bob's outside lamenting and talking to the restaurant, Louise asks him if the restaurant is going to close. Bob closes his eyes to steal himself before answering, but have a good look at his reflection in the window. Its eyes actually stay shut longer than Bob. And that's Every Mistake in Bob's Burgers, Episode 1, Season 1. Did we get it wrong? Was there something we missed? Well, tell us in the comments below and you might be credited in a future episode. Thanks for watching, and if you feel like it, click another one.